going to be showing a demonstration on using value. Value is vital. We only see value through light. If the lights are off, there is no value. In general, we're going to address value through the six levels or layers of light. So we're going to start with the scale. And that scale goes from very, very dark to getting lighter. And I'm using a marker, which is probably more challenging, building up the density and pressure, creating my six levels of light. Now I'm going to demonstrate this again using charcoal. But first, let's look at this. Level one is white. Level two is a quarter tone, three to four are half tone, five is a three quarter tone, and six is black. You can do the same experience and the same practice using charcoal, which is a lot easier and something that I suggest that you practice at home. Value scale gives you a reference on building light to dark so that when you approach an object, you can depict it more realistically. Basically, we can visually see at least 20 transitions from light to dark. But if we break it down from 1 to 6, and get the nuances in between, we're going to really be able to express the form. Notice that I am using straight lines as opposed to curvy lines because I'm drawing on a flat surface and it is the, as this is a value scale, I want it to appear flat. So I have some reference. See the difference between the mark making material. We also can have a reference and a literal description of an object with other descriptive words. So as I am drawing the shadow on the object itself, building through pressure and density, I am going to be able to show my six levels of light. As I'm drawing my objects from observation, very often when I'm looking for the nuances and the transitions, what I'm doing is saying, hey, that's probably a number one or a highlight, or that is a number two value a light or local value. That's a reflection. There's a number six value where I really need to push that edge. Again, the mark is reminiscent of the form. Review that a form has volume, whereas a shape is flat. Notice that there's oftentimes a lot of light within the shadow. And because of the comparison of light to dark within the shadow, it tends to look a lot lighter than it actually is. As we're looking at this, we can see, and I'll build up the value just a little bit more, we have our number one, which is a highlight or a hot spot. This is where the light directly hits the object and bounces back. Number two is light. Number three is shadow. Four is the core of the shadow. Five is the reflection, and six is the cast shadow. Let's so build some of those transitions a little bit more. I'm using compressed charcoal. I'm not smudging. I'm using, again, the mark to duplicate the form of the object that I'm representing. I am not smudging because I can build up more layers of light and dark by not smudging. 
I can work it in. Eventually, I will get this to a number six value. Number six value. I will be able to indicate where the hot spots are or the highlights, which is my number one. I'll get my quarter tones, which is in the light. I will get my number five values, which would be in the shadow or the core. I might find a number five or number six value in the cast shadow. So I'm using two ways to define the value as I'm looking at it. I'm using a numerical value scale, and I'm using words like quarter tone, half tone, three-quarter tone, cast shadow, reflection, bounce back light. But you will also observe, and what makes drawing and painting unique in the depiction of objects and isolating how we actually see things, is to pick out those elegant nuances, like the bounce back light that is at the edge of objects, that is reflection from the table that they're sitting on, the light which is bouncing back into the cast shadow. The next process that you would be exploring in working your first still life in the exploration of value is to work reductively. What you're going to do is you're going to produce a number three, no darker, value on your paper. And you're going to gently smudge it using either a chamois or a paper towel. You notice that it will pick up the texture of the underlying substrate that you're working on. In many ways, that can create an interesting pattern that you can either erase away or use. Now, we have both reductive and additive processes that we'll eventually use, but this is a very easy way to introduce looking at light. We have a still light set up. We have a still light set up that has white on white objects that has a lot of cast shadow. So the focus of the light on the still life is very, very sharp and distinct to create a lot of contrast. What we're going to do is, in general, you're going to want to start with a kneaded eraser, which I don't have in my hand right now. So problem solving quickly. I'm going to use a mass gesture and using, again, pressure and density I'm going to define my still life, just lifting the charcoal. Now, if you get it too dark, what happens is you're not going to be able to get your hot spots back. Now, very often you can do almost the entire drawing reductively, lifting, seeing that relationship. The goal, the objective is to lose all the lines and have the objects be depicted through their relationship of light to dark using push and pull. Notice again, I am not smudging. I'm observing all of the levels of light in the object itself. My light source is from over here. It is inevitable that as you're working reductively, you will eventually have to come in with more charcoal and work additively to start to push your object forward. So as I come into that edge to push it forward, push my object forward, I might get into number five and number six values. I'm using the verbiage that I learned through the practice of creating a value scale and working on spheres to describe what I'm drawing, to help reinforce my understanding of the levels of light. I'm working into it with a vine charcoal. I'm going to work back and forth between additive and reductive 
some of the edges and hot spots I'm going to define again using a cut stuff retractable eraser. Basically your system for working reductive is to start with a kneaded eraser, masking it in, then go into a Mars plastic eraser to lift a little bit more, finishing up with the tough stuff for edges, to sharpen your edges. Now you can keep this very general if you wish. Fine charcoal is much softer and will produce a much lighter affect, good for transition. I'm coming in with compressed charcoal 